بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين حبيب إله العالمين نبينا محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خذ من أموالهم صدقة تطهرهم وتزكيهم بها وصل عليهم إن صلاتك سكن لهم والله سميع عليم أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected viewers, brothers and sisters Salaamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh When the word sadaqa is mentioned What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Indeed, most people who have come to terms with this particular terminology Will associate it with giving and some kind of charitable donation because of course sadaqa and charity constitutes part and parcel of many people's lives either we have come across people who in some form or another have contributed towards alleviating the suffering of others towards building a hospital or a school or an orphanage or ourselves, we may have uh, taken part and contributed in one shape or form. Therefore, when we look at this subject, it is part and parcel of the lives of many people. And within the Islamic teachings and the lives of the glorious Masumin, the Ahl al Bayt, the ship of salvation, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een, may the peace and blessings be upon them all, we find that the concept of Charity and sadaqa was integral, something that emerged and was crystallized in their conduct, in their teachings, in their actions. This was something that the Qur'an itself uh, verifies. So the famous incident in the story whereby the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace and blessings be upon him, his beloved righteous, honorable lady of light, Sayyidat nisa Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, and their sons, Imam al-Hasan and Hussein, uh, in addition to Lady Fidda, their servant, according to some narrations, observed the three-day fast out of their vow to get the children cured because of an illness. And in those three days, as the Quran in Surah Al-Insan explains, they donated and they gave away all their food on three consecutive days to the orphan. Uh, first of all, to the poor person. And secondly, to the second day to the orphan. And the third day to the captive. And this is, for example, one reference in the Holy Quran with regards to the Ahl al-Bayt's attention and focus on sadaqah. Another is the famous uh, verse in Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, describes the merit of the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace and blessings be upon him. And he uh, speaks about how Imam alayhi salam uh, gave charity at night and during the day publicly and in private. Whereby he says that uh, Those who give their wealth at night during the day in private and in public. And that was uh, a matter that Imam alayhi salam was indeed praised. Similarly, we have chapter 5 verse 55 in which Imam Ali alayhi salam famously gave his ring in salah. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Surely verily, your authority is God, His Prophet and those whom uh, give charity whilst uh, they are performing their prayers and they give their uh, charity directly whilst in the state of ruku'ah, bowing down. Therefore, we find that the Ahl al-Bayt have, in so many narrations, 
highlighted how sadaqa should not be detached from the personality of a mu'min, of a believer. It is so integral, it is so pivotal that its separation is something which is indeed uh, discouraged within the teachings of the religion. Once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, was sitting with some of his companions and a group of Muslims from the tribe of Mudar, they entered. Uh, they said to the Prophet, we are ready for jihad, for the uh, physical uh, struggle, in other words, to fight the enemies. Um, but their look, uh, clothes looked very old, they was torn, and therefore the Prophet of Islam looked at them with compassion. They looked very tired, they looked hungry. The Prophet said, uh, sat on the member in his masjid and recited, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wal tandur nafsun ma qaddamat lighat. O you who believe, have God consciousness, and let every soul examine what they have offered for tomorrow. Then he said, Tasaddaqu qabla an la tusaddaqu. Give charity before it's too late. Why? Then he says, Tasaddaqu qabla an yuhala baynakum was sadaqa. Give sadaqa before there's a barrier between you and sadaqa, which means death. Can't really give any sadaqa or donation or charitable contribution after death. He said, even if it's part of a date, a man stood up. He gave a bag uh, full of money and the Prophet of Islam was indeed pleased and said مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنًا وَعَمِلَ بِهَا كَانَ لَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَمَثَلُ أَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا Whomsoever does a, a good deed within the religion of Islam he gets the reward of it and the reward of whomsoever follows on. If others were encouraged by the giving of this charity by this particular individual, then the thawab and the reward from this encouragement until the day of judgment, this person will reap. Notice the wonderful opportunity that exists when it comes to giving for the sake of Allah, especially if it's purely uh, as an intention for the sake of Allah and also to encourage others to do the same. Now, uh, of course, in Islamic teachings, sadaqah is not necessarily just uh, charitable donations. Uh, it could be anything which is beneficial, anything which is positively uh, a contribution uh, towards others. So, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a narration says, "Inna ala kulli muslimin fi kulli yawmin sadaqa." He famously said, "Every Muslim must give sadaqa every day." Now, some people might say, "I may not have." money to give every day. So the response was, how about those who can't? He responded back by highlighting that, look, sadaqah is not only to dig into your pockets and take out the coins and the notes, the dollars and the pounds and the other currencies. He famously says, if you remove hardship from somebody's path or difficulty or obstacle, if somebody's walking and you kind of make it easier for them, their path, public path, that is sadaqa. Irshaduka rajul ila tariq sadaqa. If someone comes and asks you, uh, how do I get to somewhere? And you show them the, the, the direction, that is according to the Holy Prophet and the narration is sadaqa. Ayadatuka al marid sadaqa. When you visit the ill, those who are suffering from ailments or are sick, this is sadaqa. Amruka bil ma'roof sadaqa. To enjoin the good is sadaqa. Nahyuka anil munkar sadaqa. To uh, forbid the evil is considered charity. Then the Prophet of Islam even goes on to say, sadaqa, To respond to the salam of an individual, which is in itself wajib, is sadaqa. So can you see, the, the idea of sadaqa is much broader than necessarily financial contribution. Every righteous deed, kullu ma'rufin sadaqa, the smile when somebody smiles in your face, according to the narration, is actually sadaqa. And uh, Imam al-Sajjad, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, the fourth holy Imam of the Ahl al-Bayt, talks about seeking halal rizq. Man talaba halalun fahuwa min Allahi sadaqa. If you and I seek uh, legitimate wealth, then according to the narration of the Imam, it constitutes 
charity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well as the fact that staying away from uh, evil deeds uh, and appropriate words or actions such as kathib, lying, namima, ghiba, slander, backbiting, staying away deliberately or holding oneself also is charity. Notice the wonderful kind of broad uh, description of what constitutes charity within the teachings of the religion of Islam. At the same time though, we find that the main focus many a times when it comes to this word is primarily on giving for the sake of Allah. In other words, to financially contribute. And uh, this is something that the Quran has spoken about in numerous occasions. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ya'lamu anna Allah huwa yaqbalu tawbata an ibadihi wa ya'khudu sadaqat. Beautiful verse if we reflect on it. He says, do you not know that it is Allah himself who accepts the penitence, the repentance from his servants, and it is he himself who takes the sadaqah. That is why Imam Zayn al-Abideen, Sayyid al-Sajideen, Ali ibn al-Husayn salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, used to kiss the hands of the poor whom are given sadaqah. Because he says, metaphorically, it is as if I am kissing the hands of God. From the Quran, it is as if we are giving it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And it is an avenue by which the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us, our situation. So sometimes when we give, for example, towards uh, a majlis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, we give towards the rebuilding of a mosque or a Husseiniyah, we give towards an orphan. We think that we are helping them, but in reality, that opportunity to give is from God. He's sending us these people. It's a tawfiq. You know, some people out there, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them. They have the wealth. Uh, they are able to give, but they don't know whom to give, how to spend it, where to give, you know. And to give it in one's lifetime is much, much, much more rewarding and blissful when it comes to fruits and outcomes for the soul on the day of judgment or after death than to give it or to write it in the will. Famous story where we are told the Prophet wasallam saw that the Muslims were collecting dates that belonged to an individual who passed away and basically he left the third of his wealth for the poor on the needy. He picked up one date and said if he had given this one date during his lifetime, he would have got more reward than all this now after he passed away. Why? It's much harder to give during the lifetime than it is to write on the will that when I pass away, the third that I'm entitled to as far as my wealth is concerned, I want it to be given for a particular cause. It's much easier to put it on the will much more challenging, much more difficult to give the wealth that you have whilst you're still alive because, of course, shaitan tends to play in our minds and to kind of uh, project this idea of poverty. shaitan يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرِ The Quran says, the shaitan promises you, uh, you know, uh, the state of poverty, being poor. And so, it is of the utmost importance of recognizing that when we give sadaqah, it's like we're giving it to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in a narration states, سَبْعَةٌ فِي ظِلِّ عَرْشِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ There are seven who will be specially protected by the uh, shadow of God or protection of God on the Day of Judgment from chastisement on the day that no one said shall attain this except God, or shall be giving this rather, not except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Adil, uh, a leader of a community, a scholar who is just, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah, a youth who grows and is nurtured in the worship of God, 
ورجل تصدق بيمينه فأخفاه عن شماله A man or a woman who gives with his right but hides it from his left meaning that he does not necessarily give for ostentation, for riya, for showing off. It is purely and sincerely to seek the pleasure of God. So, principally we are told within the religion of Islam, yes, charity is important. Charity is a prerequisite for spiritual advancement, for the nourishment of the soul. But there are certain situations and conditions which need to be adhered to. And one of them is, of course, we should not be boastful and somehow seeking the approval and the uh, reward from others when we give for these charitable causes, but rather it should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. That is why there is uh, this apparently this uh, mystical figure or perhaps more of a uh, legendary figure by the name of Juha and he uh, used to have some nice uh, anecdotes one day he passed by a mosque that was being built and he saw the person carving out his name on on the entrance of the mosque so he said to him uh, you know can you what, what is this he says I'm putting my name because I built this mosque he said, whilst you're at it, can you add my name also, please? Uh, the man responded and said, no, that's impossible. I can't add your name because you didn't pay for this mosque. And then Juha immediately said, then are you just placing it there so that people recognize it's you who donated and therefore you would get the recognition? So if it wasn't... If it was entirely for the sake of Allah, you'd include other people's names. No problem. So that was a litmus test. Somehow identified the intention of this particular uh, individual. Um, sadaqa is also highlighted and one of the etiquettes is to be given at certain times. For example, we are told first night in the grave when people are buried, it's a good time to... Uh, give sadaq on their behalf. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يأتي على الميت ساعة أشد من أول ليلة فارحموا موتاكم بالصدقة That the, uh, the, that the person who's going, going through uh, death will not go through more harder time than the first night in the grave. Therefore, have mercy upon the deceased by giving them sadaqah. Of course, certain times such as Friday during the day, Thursday nights during the month of Ramadan, the day of Arafah, on behalf of others, on behalf of course of the Ahlul Bayt, especially the living, uh, uh, the present Holy Imam, Imam Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman, the 12th Holy Imam, al-Mahdi al-Muntadar, Ajjar Allah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif to uh, give sadaqa on their behalf. Importantly, Imam al Baqir sallallahu alayhi says that, in according to the narration, in al Abd la yakun barran bi walidayhi fi hayatihima, thumma yamutani fala yaqdi anhuma dunahuma, wala yastaghfir lahuma fayaktubuhu Allahu aqa. Subhanallah. Listen to what the fifth holy imam is narrated to have said. He said, well, you know, you have servants who, of God, people, who are kind towards their parents in their lifetime. Then their parents pass away. But they don't give charity on their behalf by, for example, fulfilling their loans and dues. And they don't ask forgiveness of God for them, then it is written that they were disobedient to parents. Even the responsibility uh, that one has upon their parents continues after death too. So it doesn't stop after somebody's parents have passed away, but rather it is something that is on the shoulders 
and it on the on the shoulders of the sons of the daughter and it is necessary to continue on this particular remembrance especially when it comes to uh, sadaqa now some people ask what is the benefit of uh, sadaqa how do we uh, gain you know some kind of reward well what does the quran and the ahlul bayt alayhum salam say uh, with regards to this very quickly uh, one of them is to uh, it will bring about spiritual cleansing as the quran says khudh min amwalihim sadaqa tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim that this sadaqa take it from them it will purify them it will cleanse them and therefore uh, it is said that the reason why it cleanses us well we say cleanses as far as the soul is concerned the reason why it cleanses us is because it somehow breaks that idol within us which is self-desire or love of materialism love of this world it is giving away that which we desire the most that's why the quran says Lan tanalu al-birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibun. righteousness you will never attain until you give from that which you desire the most. It's that detachment of worldly matters and attachment to God, which is the focus of the Quran and it was the practice of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Now, of course, many instances are found within the life of uh, the Imma alayhum salam, Sayyidatun Nisa Fatima salawatullahi wa salamu alayha, as well as, of course, before them, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, his holy progeny. One day, Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace be upon him, was in Medina. He saw his uh, trusted friend, uh, al-Maqdad, who was distressed. When he said salam to him, he responded back, but he wasn't the same. So, Maqdad had asked him, um, Imam Ali alayhi salam asked him, oh, Maqdad, what is wrong? Maqdad said, well, you know, my family haven't eaten. They, you know, they're hungry. We don't have any food. Imam Ali alayhi salam had borrowed taken a loan of some money to provide for his own family because his own family also had an eater so what he does is he needs it most imam ali needs that money to provide for his own family yet he prefers others over himself so he gives it to maqdad he says go go and use it buy some food and feed your family he goes to the mosque they perform salatul isha and when the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him and his family, finishes the salah, he turns to Amir al-Mu'mineen and says, uh, Ya Ali, I'm coming to your house for some food today, tonight. Imam Ali al recognizes there's no food. But, of course, he welcomes the Prophet of Islam. When the Prophet comes, Sayyidatu Nisa Fatima is informed. She goes to the area where she prepares the food. And she prays to Allah for any food to be granted towards her. The narrations tell us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends food from heaven, from paradise rather, and it is presented towards the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. And then he explains, he says, this food is from paradise, but it's because of the sacrifice of Imam Ali alayhi salam with regards to giving that money of his that he needed to Maqdad. Such was the reward of the Almighty as far as the um, Sadaqa is concerned. Uh, an individual said, was, I was with Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam in Masjid al-Nabawi. And part of the ceiling that was there collapsed. But it only hit, uh, the, it kind of landed on the legs of a particular individual. Um, and so it didn't fall on him. Somehow people were surprised because it was supposed to fall on him. Uh, the Imam Ali Salam asked that individual, or was asked people to ask that individual, what did you do? And he said, I've just given sadaqa. I had dates, I gave them to the poor. And Imam Baqir Ali Salam says, Biha dafa Allahu ank. Through it, Allah protected you from calamities. And this is the second advantage of giving charity for the sake of Allah. Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallam alayhi narration says, As-sadaqatu tatfa'u sab'eena naw'an min anwa'il bala'a. Sadaqa, 
uh, protects and kind of pushes away 70 types of uh, calamities, 70 types of hardships. And, you know, the more sadaqah we give, inshallah, there is more protection. The more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from uh, hardship and difficulties. Inshallah, we will continue with this particular uh, topic uh, because of its sensitivity and its importance in the next time. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon us the tawfiq to be able to make sadaqah something which is second nature, malaka, meaning we don't have to think about it, but it's always there in our minds. If we get the opportunity, we give straight away without hesitation so that our wealth is purified, so that our soul is indeed purified and we are protected from hardship and calamities. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Thank you.